are listening to the most original talk radio station anywhere. We are LA Talk Radio at latalkradio.com. You're listening to Question Reality. Question Reality. With Priscilla Leona. Priscilla Leona. Only on LA Talk Radio. Welcome to Question Reality. I am your host, Priscilla Leona, and we are coming to you live from Los Angeles, California. Our show is broadcast every Sunday from 5 p.m. to 5.50 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Now, if this is your first time tuning in, our show will help you to question your career reality. Now, this show is for you if you were, are, or might be considering a career in the entertainment industry. Our guests will provide advice, tips, and resource information on how and what it takes to successfully pursue a career in show business. Our guests work in various professions of entertainment, so that means that we will definitely have someone on the show sooner or later from a career that you are interested. If you want to check out our past guests, read their bios, listen to their interview instantly, or download one of the shows, go to the LA Talk Radio website. That's LA latalkradio.com. If you're listening to us live, you are already there. So just go to the top, take your little eyeballs to the top of the menu at the link that says channel one, scroll down, look for the graphic of our show, question reality, and click the link. And this will take you directly to our archive page and you can view the list of all of our past guests. Now our shows are also available for download on iTunes under the podcast section. So just go to iTunes, type in uh, the search box, question reality radio, and there we are from 2008 till present. And if you want to find out about our future guest, you have to go to our official Question Reality website, and that address is questionrealityshow.com, questionrealityshow.com. And I am so, 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 so excited because I am almost finished with booking for the year. Our show, thank God, praise Allah or whoever whoever you praise. I tell you, this show has become so popular. I am bombarded with emails and I love it. My husband doesn't love it because I usually spend a whole day answering them, but we have become so popular. I'm booking six months to a year in advance and I only have two more dates to go and I am done and I'll start to book for January uh, in probably November. So I've been getting a lot of emails wanting a November, December time slot, but I only have two left and I have to save those one for the film critic who comes on in December and the other one for my very favorite psychic because you know how I'm into the psychics. So I have to save it for those, but we can get you on starting in January. So uh, November, we will start booking again. So check with me back in November. Now, very exciting, exciting, exciting day, because as you know, most of my fans know me well enough to know, what do I love more than anything? British boys! Woo! Guy, God, I love my British boys. Oh, my God. And, you know, my friends say, why didn't you marry a British guy? Oh, my God. British boys are for fun. But I just can't handle them. They're too wild for me. I couldn't be married to one. They like their pints too much. Can't handle that. Have to have someone who isn't a drinker, isn't a smoker, just a little nerd. And British boys are too hot and happening for that. So they're for love. Love and fancy times, but not for uh, bringing home and keeping them at home at nighttime. All right. So we got two of them today. As promised, we have Matt Hick and Chris Lom, two hotties, mind you, two hottie British boys. So women get the fantasies going. Okay. Um, now I found them, you know, they, they, uh, Matt contacted me via Twitter. I always thought, my God, when I always get Facebook emails saying, oh, can I come on your show? Or they find me by listening, but I never had anyone contact me via Twitter before. And it seemed like once Matt started, all of a sudden there was an influx. So now I got lots of requests. So I think Matt got the ball rolling. 
Now, we are going to talk to him a little later. They are producers, directors, writers, and also actors. And we are going to answer some of your questions, uh, like what are the critical steps that should be taken when scripting to get the basic ingredients right when making a film. We're going to find out how you make the most of your money producing a low-budget film. We're also going to talk about what are some of their tricks and how they tweak things in post-production to get the most of a low-budget film. I get asked that question a lot, so hopefully they'll be able to answer that. And also, we'll, we will learn about film festivals, the film festival market, and independent distribution. And they will tell us how they went about doing that. But first, I want to say happy Father's Day, yay, to all of the worthy, loved dads out there today, especially to whom I consider my favorite dad of all time, Fred Foote, yay. He should be cloned and labeled one of the best dads ever, ever. Fred foot fred foot in delaware okay let's get on with the latest news and casting director workshops around town i've got some great ones for you but first if you watch commercials especially sprint commercials i know everybody has seen this commercial because it comes on every five minutes this sprint commercial well the gentleman in the commercial is my very good friend jim meskimen and jim meskimen I swear to God, I've seen this commercial so many times, the Sprint commercial, that I actually had a dream a couple weeks ago that he was in the commercial, but he was for Verizon. He did not like that. So anyway, this commercial comes on about 100 times a day. He is a really, he's the really handsome, debonair, gray-haired gentleman with the, with the possible German accent who comments on the guy wearing the, the small Speedo on the beach. You know what Sprint commercial I'm talking about. Well, recently, he was a guest on our show. And if you tuned in, you know that he also possesses the awesome ability to do impressions, specifically celebrity impressions. He is so incredible and he is extremely funny. And we went to one of his shows recently and the show was hilarious. <clears throat> It was so funny, and we were enthralled uh, with the whole setup. I mean, he does the whole costume thing, lighting thing, set design, fantastic. Well, I wanted to tell you, got to go see him, and his next show, which is entitled Jim Pressions, is <clears throat> going to be July 21st in Hollywood at the Acting Center, the Acting Center in Hollywood. He also owns this theater, and then again, he's going to be July 25th, he's going to be at the three stages uh, at Folsom College. Both of the performances are at 8 o'clock, and the tickets are very inexpensive for the value that you get for this show. You will have tears rolling down your eyes. Now, if you want to check that out, go to his website, jimpressions.net, J-I-M-P-R-E-S-S-I-O-N-S.net. Very funny, definitely worth your time. Take a date. She will love you afterwards, and you will get lucky because she's going to be in a good mood. All right. So the following casting director workshops are going to take place at Actors Creative Workshop. It is the website is trulyacting.com. All right. First one, Monday, June 18th, which is tomorrow at 7.30, $50, Valerie McCaffrey. Everybody knows Valerie McCaffrey, huge head casting director, has her own casting company now. This class is open to teens and adults. Valerie McCaffrey, as you know, is a legend in the field of casting. She's been working since the 80s. Some of her previous credits, I can't talk, previous credits include... Problem Child 1 and 2, An American Tale, Bible Goes West, Babe, The Island of Dr. Moreau, American History X, Dark City, and way too many more to list. It just goes on and on and on and on. Again, extremely busy office. You want to check her out on imdb.com for her full credits. And what you want to do for this workshop is bring in two copies of a two to three minute scene of your choice and then read one-on-one uh, -on -one with the reader. Now, if you need help finding a scene or if you per, prefer cold reads, they have several scenes you can choose from at the workshop. So 
excellent class. Tuesday, the 19th at 8 o'clock, $55, Jamie Castro. She's with Linda Lowey Casting. This is open to teens and adults. Jamie Castro is uh, an associate at Lindy Lowey. Lindy Lowey. I swear, have I taken too many pills today? I guess I didn't tell you people that I'm sick. That's why I, you're not getting my full high tone, full pitch voice that normally sounds like I'm screaming, but I'm actually talking. So I've got a cold. Popped about four pills, drank some cough syrup. Can't really talk right now, but that's okay. I'm going to get through it. Okay, so Jamie Castro is the associate for Lindy Lowey Casting. Nobody could say that. Say that five times. I challenge you. Okay, she's been at the company forever, for four years, and she's been casting for six. Some of her previous credits include Grey's Anatomy, Private Practice, Prime Suspect, and Scandal, <clears throat> which is airing in... 2012 fall, uh, one of the pilots, and some of the odd, uh, her other projects are Friday Night Lights and Off the Map. So she's going to do paired cold reads. And the next one is Wednesday the 20th at $7.30, $45, Dory Zuckerman, huge, 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 huge casting director for Zuckerman Casting. This is open to teens and adults. Her, <clears throat> she's currently casting the second season of the FX series with Elijah Wood and three upcoming features. Dory uh, started out in the business, as most people know, at William Morris Agency and then became a publicist in the mid-80s. And some of her clients were semi-known at the time. But guess who they were? George Clooney, Sarah Jessica Parker, Kelly Preston, Bill Paxton, Alfonso Ribeiro, and Andrew Dice Clay. After she was there a year, she wanted to get closer to acting without actually being in front of the camera. So she started working on television, and she cast for Babylon 5, the new WKRP in Cincinnati, Sabrina the Teenage Witch. They came from outer space with a very, very young Halle Berry. That is also a paired cold read. And the very the last one I have for you today is on Wednesday, June 27th at 7 o'clock, $55. Huge, huge casting director, Fern Campion, or Champion, some people say. She is with, of course, Fern Champion Casting. This is open to teens and adults. As you know, Fern has been a casting legend in the field of casting here. She has been working since the 80s. Some of her credits include all the Police Academy movies, Naked Gun, Friday the 13th, Pet Cemetery, The Mask, Babylon 5, Mortal Kombat, Beverly Hills 902, see, I can't say it, 90210. Lord, I think I'm drunk. I'm not sure, but I think I'm drunk or high, but not intentionally, I swear. Okay, and way too many to list. This is extremely busy office, so check her out on IMDb, Paired Cold Read. Oh, my God. God, I'm through it. Okay. Yay. So great classes, great classes. Every week, as you know, we have uh, wonderful acting classes. I choose them uh, based on credibility. They really have to be top of the line casting directors. I don't send you to uh, people who are not credentialed. So check these out for sure. All right, let's get to the two hotties today. They are the British boys who are making a big blast. And they are Matthew Hick and Chris Lum. And they are writing and directing partners who have been working together since 2007. We got to find out how that is. I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe it's because they're in England. But out here, you're lucky if you can find someone to work with all those years. Usually, they're, they're fist fighting in a, a six months to a year or cheating with each other's wives and girlfriends. So we got to find out what the secret is. Uh, they started out performing at a monthly comedy night. And the two started writing sketches together and eventually short films. In 2009, they wrote, produced, and directed and acted in their first feature-length collaboration. It was a low-budget movie called – now, this is – now, I tell you, if I get through this title, I need to get some credit because this one is a tongue twister for me today. All right, here's the movie. Tuck Bushman and the legend – of Piddledown Dale. Ah, I got through it. Oh, 
Yes. Okay. Since then, the two have continued to work together and have branched into the production of more serious films. And in 2012, which it is now, they did their first dramatic short called Our Only Defense. And it was accepted by Indie Flicks. I don't know what Indie Flicks is, but it sounds like Netflix. So we're going to see what that is for people who don't know. They are currently working on a follow-up to the Tuck Bushman movie and a short horror entitled The Long Distance Relationship. Now that sounds more like a romance, so we're going to have to find out how that's a horror movie. Um, Hopefully today we're going to find out what the critical steps are that should be taken when scripting to get the basic ingredients right. We're going to find out how to make the most of your money producing a low budget film and we're going to find out some of their tricks and their tweaks in uh, post-production and we're going to find out how maybe their film festival is different than ours maybe the same i'm not sure but we're going to find out how their film film festival market and independent distribution happens for them so without further ado i'm expecting a big hearty robust hello to Matt and Chris. Welcome to the show. Hello. Hello. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for having us. Yeah, I've had to uh, douse Chris down with a bucket of water after that extremely um, <laughs> warm introduction that you gave us there. Well, yeah. you two should be drunk by now after it comes <laughs> so along. My I think we're, God. we're drunk in love, Leona. Hey, okay, let's start out with, and uh, with two of you together, it, it, I don't know how you're going to do it. I guess you've worked it out, but I'm going to ask a question, and then whoever feels uh, comfortable answering it, l- just jump in. The first question that we ask of all of our guests, because we like to know how the journey started. So what did you want to do or be when you were a child? Did you always want to be in doing what you do now or did you want to do or be something else? Okay, well, um, for myself, I'm Chris, by the way. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, that was I, the I, you introduced yourself. Hi, Chris here or Matt here. That way we could, okay, figure okay, it out. Go well, ahead. This, this is Chris. Well, I um, I started out, when I, when I was younger, I always did um, impressions and uh, uh, comedy comedy bits and bats, you know. So I, I, I kind of started at a young age doing all that, trying to make people laugh. So that's where the comedy comes from uh, f- for me, um, you know. So I, I, I've always pursued that kind of... Uh, kind of thing just to just to try and entertain and make people laugh so so, so yeah. that means that you were kicked out of classes many many times as a oh child. absolutely yeah, <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely yeah what about you matt where did you uh did you have the same type of feeling as a child um I, I did when i was older i think when i when i was younger um rather bizarrely uh, i've i've always enjoyed writing and, and have been writing since since a young age so i did a lot at school i won my first writing competition when i was probably about 7 or 8 which was strangely enough hosted by one of our local banks which is is kind of strange when you think about it um and and i've been writing on and off ever since really um it, it wasn't until i met chris that we, that we started writing films and and things together but short stories and i, I just find being creative is a is a great great outlet really just for any frustrations or any I suppose it's just a cathartic process really so I, I, I was more interested in writing from a young age but um Wait, was as, your was your family's uh were your family supportive of your entertainment industry decision uh yeah I think I think I think on both counts I think we've got quite a lot of support from um, families um sometimes when you suggest certain things they probably look at you a bit funny but the uh to get over it. <laughs> now, now, if if you now you you guys, uh, I don't know if you're. I know you're in Leeds now, but I don't know if you were born there. Um, in that environment of Leeds, and God knows, I would have to look on the map to know where that is. I'm terrible with geography. I know it's somewhere in England, somewhere. So we're, we're uh, up north. Up north, like by Manchester and stuff. Yeah, yeah, we're yeah. east of east of Manchester. Okay. Yeah. I. 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 <laughs> I my girlfriend, you remember I was telling you earlier about how in college we used to go down and see the British boys while well, they would come on on the ship. Well, one of my girlfriends fell in love with a British guy and she ended up getting married to him. So I went to England to just stay for a week for the wedding. Next thing you know, I, I didn't leave until my passport expired six months later. <laughs> and I was Is able to. 
<laughs> well, six months is all you got, and then they kick you out. But um, <laughs> we, we did go to Manchester, and um, I was able to go to Scotland and and uh, and Wales, and and so I know that Leeds is up north, but I didn't know you know exactly where it was. But it's a is it a small town or is it a fairly big city? No, it is a big city. Um, it's definitely a big city. Um, <clears throat> I don't think it has the the creative heart that Manchester has. Um, I mean, the, the BBC has, has just moved a lot of its production up to Manchester. It's got quite a, a lively club scene. Some of the biggest uh, comedians in Britain perform regularly in Manchester. Leeds has, has never really had that. It's not really had the music scene. It's not really had the, the comedy scene. So <clears throat> from a creative point of view, perhaps it would have been better... Chris and I are both from Leeds. Maybe we should have been born in Manchester. <laughs> well, maybe you can still travel there. Now, when your when your family found out about this, were they the very supportive and helpful? And did they help you? I guess more or less finance things, or you know, how did you? How did how did the fa- family dynamic work with with the? With, oh gosh, let let's start because you two didn't meet until 2007. Okay, so independently, when your families found out that you wanted to pursue the entertainment industry, you know how a lot of these small towns they want their children to either become doctors or lawyers or go into the family business or go into the coal mine or where whatever the thing is in their town. What? <laughs> What exactly? <laughs> well, I, I, I started off down a coal mine, but it didn't work out. So, <laughs> so, um, you, didn't, so you didn't get pressure. You pretty much had freedom to, well, because there are so many people that email the show, and they re- they live in small towns here in the United States, and they are not allowed their families will not allow them to pursue entertainment because they believe it's a silly fantasy and they force them to, to work in other jobs. But did you have that problem from your well, family where they said, go for it? Well, I think, well, from my point of view, I've always had the support there, but I also think it's important for, well, for your listeners as well to, I've always had a, like a steady job while I started off really doing this as a hobby myself. Mm-hmm. And then as, as things progress, I mean, I, you know, we still have like nine to five jobs, you know, we go work and we do this in more spare time, you know, and, and build things up that way. And um, then I think you get the recognition. I think people go a bit easier on you then to say, oh, actually, this is pretty good. You know what you're doing, you know, it's all about building up. I mean, as you'll know, you know, building up credits and um, experience as you go. So, yeah, yeah. And I, th- I think from a, from a writing point of view, I think it's, you know, I, I can write anywhere, anytime, and as long as you've got a notebook or a computer or somewhere to jot down your ideas if, you, if you're trying to sort out your structure mm. for, your, for your screenplay or, or whatever, you know, it's... I, the thing is, I'm constantly thinking about it, so whether I'm sort of at work or, or at home, ideas are still going through my head, and it's, and it's not necessarily that I need to be, you know, giving up my job or anything to do it. As, you know, I'm still kind of focusing on, on what I'm working on. Like, that's fine. So neither, so I assume that neither of you went to film school. So if you did not, um, how did you go about teaching yourself uh, to write scripts and shoot films? Because, I mean, there is a basic structure to writing scripts and shooting films. You do have to know, you know, yeah. some base things. What did you two do to teach yourselves? I think um, from from my own point of view, I think, like probably many of your listeners, you know, you, you probably fall in love with films. You really enjoy, you know, comedy or whatever it is that you're into. And for me, I just launched myself into it and I didn't really understand uh, structure. Um, I didn't really understand about how to write dialogue. I mean, if, if I look back at my first uh, first script, there's, there's probably little to no structure. There's the chunks of dialogue that go on for half a page. Um, you know, the, the, the scene directions are probably really, really clunky and, and it's probably quite terrible. And I think as you sort of, you know, because you enjoy doing it, um, I'm the sort of person that's keen to to read about how how to structure things, and and you, and you you look out you look for sources that are going to teach you how to do that. Um, and there's there's an awful lot of stuff out there um, from podcasts to to books to to stuff on the internet, and it's just about absorbing that. And, and as you kind of start to absorb that, 
you find that when you when you're watching films, you go, "Oh right, so that's that that's the inciting incident, and that's that's the first act turning point." All oh, right, so that's where so they spend so long on developing the characters at the start of a film before the story actually starts, and 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 how 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 the narrative's structured and things like that. that that's that's the way I went about it. So what what are the what do you feel are <clears throat> the very basic critical steps that should be taken when scripting to get the basic ingredients right? What what do you think is the key? I, th I think the first thing is you need a, you need a good idea for a story. <clears throat> um, and then once you've got that, the, the, I mean the, the mistake that I would always make uh, when I started was I would just start writing and I'd, I'd go right. I've got an idea for a story. And I'd, I'd think, right, I've got, I'd need the characters and I'd just start writing, blah, blah, blah. And 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 it, and it just kind of fell onto the page. And, and that's the worst thing you can, can probably do, really. I think the, the most important thing is to sit down and structure how you're going to put your story together, how you're going to tell it in a way that's interesting. And and what I, the way that I would usually do it is I would, I would look at the structure and I would I, – I still, you know, a, a proponent of, of the three-act structure. I mean – you can say other people will say our oh, five act structure is better, but at the end of the day, you need a beginning, you need a middle, you need an end, and you need turning points within that to flip your story around and, and make it interesting. And mm. so I, I would structure, uh, I would write my structure for my story, and then what I would do is go away and and write character arcs and character uh, pl uh, outlines for each of the major characters, so that I know what they were doing before the film started, what they're doing during it, and where they're going after it, so that when, when I'm writing, um, and particularly right, it's so important that you, when you're writing the dialogue that you know where these characters have come from, what makes them talk, what makes them behave the way that they do, that you know how those characters are and, and and make and that they're believable to you because if they're not believable to you then they're not going to be believable to to anyone that, that's watching the film i don't know yeah i think i mean i think we work, we work quite differently um, yeah, with do, regards yeah. to research and things you'll you'll spend your time looking in books and yeah. going through a lot of stuff i'm, I'm a bit more uh, hands-on myself i think it's i mean you're more of a writer anyway aren't you yeah. and you perform as well um, you just started out doing directs and everything yeah. now, aren't you? But I've always been kind of a, a bit of a jack of all trades with it. I'd write it and then I'd go out and perform as well and film it. And a lot of that was because I had to do it off my own back. You know, you, we didn't have massive resources, so I'd have to I'd have to go and be in this stuff and film it as well. You know, so behind the camera and in front of it and write it as well. And and in a way, that's that's kind of how you develop the script from my point of view as well. You know, you've you've got to think about every aspect. And that means you can do it low budget because you've got you think well how can I do this and mm. you kind of overcome the problems as you go so you know yeah I'm de I'm definitely a bit bit more hands on practical I, th I think writing in a in a pair is is really useful I mean I, I, I a while ago I read um, Akira Kurosawa's biography and and something that he talks about in there is he started out as a script editor and he started writing on his own and what he found was that he was writing very one dimensional characters but then he started working. Uh, writing with other directors and it was so useful f for him because it <clears throat> they were able to edit his characters and make them fuller and, and more realised people um, and I think Chris, because Chris and I have very different styles about how we would approach a script when I give a script to Chris Chris will tear it to shreds and give me loads <laughs> of advice and vice versa yeah, yeah. and at, f at first I don't know how Chris felt at first I was, I was kind of like oh he's tearing my, my, my script to shreds but <laughs> Because we're good friends, you know, we're able to, you know, we, we accept each other and, it, and respect each a, other's decisions. It gets a better end result as it well, does, so yeah. you can't argue with that, really. I mean, you know a lot more uh, longer words than me as well. So, <laughs> you know. Well, see, give the script to the person who knows more than four-letter words. That's yeah. good. Now, how do you, obviously, when you're starting out, not everyone is fortunate enough to have money to make the film of their dreams or to yeah. make their script come true in the manner that they would love to. How do you make the most out of your money producing a low budget film? What do you feel is the best way? Well, one word, comedy. Comedy? <laughs> oh, well, it's, um, I'm just thinking it's, it, I mean, the reason, the reason, uh, the thing I've always thought about, I mean, we do short comedies. We're just moving into drama, dramatic stuff now. Um, but the comedy things, I think so long as you've got the gags in there, I don't think it matters how low budget you have. As long as you've got the good gags and people are laughing at what you're doing, you know, I think I think that's the that's the key for me. You know, you don't want to sit there and watch a, a film that's got no gags in it. I mean, we all do that anyway with the the big productions. You know, you go 
to to see the latest comedy and you think where's the gags you know so i think as so long as you can get the gags in in our comedy shorts you know and, and the feature length i think you, you're, you're okay it comes i mean it, it comes right back to 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 writing a good script and, ha- and having good material to work with in the first place. I mean, <clears throat> in terms of actually making the most of what you've got, we, we don't work with big budgets at all. No. Um, so when I first sit down and write and start thinking about a script, I'm thinking about a, a limited number of characters because we don't know that many people that can act well. Um, I think about a, lo- a limited number of sets because we want to shoot it. <laughs> In I'm, sorry. Time. I'm sorry that was so funny because neither do i and i'm here in hollywood all right <laughs> well i mean you can turn anybody into an actor sometimes i mean um i mean some again it comes back to some of the some of the big budget films you know there's there's bad performances in them let's not you know let's not beat around the bush right. uh, <laughs> it's uh, so i think I mean, um, I mean, we doubled up in a lot of our things uh, as other characters. I mean, the, the feature length we did, we we played about oh, four or five characters each, but that's because we do voices. And we went along the Monty Python route, you know, uh, wigs and glasses and things to kind of hide hide us a bit. And, you know, so it all added to the comedy, I, I thought, you know. So. I mean, we were, we were very fortunate in that... Um, we come from a comedy background. We've we've been a part of the discount comedy checkout for four or five years now, and and that was something Chris formed, and, and essentially that gives us a group of players to pick from for our films. Mm. Um, so we're, we're very fortunate to have that. A lot of writers and directors wouldn't wouldn't have that troupe around them uh, to call on. And it, well, I better explain what that is. The discount comedy checkout is an improv uh, group that um, I mean, over in LA, obviously, um, in the states, you have uh, quite a lot of improv, but it's not. It's not so much. There's not that many groups over over here that do that. And I I formed the group uh, to basically develop uh, you know characters and uh, go out there and do do some comedy gigs. So a lot of the a lot of the things we used in in the, in our films we we get the characters from the actual show that we do. So you know that's a it's a good way of developing things as well. Now, what are some of your tricks and tweaks in post production of a low budget film? What do you do? Oh right, okay. Uh, <laughs> well, you, any, well uh, I, I I know big words, but I don't know that much about <laughs> software. <laughs> Again, well, for me, I, I mean, because I, I think both of us, because we both like films, you can see um, tips and tricks, especially in the older films. I mean, if you're on a low budget, you've got to figure out how to do things practically. Um, so a lot of the things, like I'll give you an example, the feature length film we did, we had to have somebody swinging through some trees. Um, so I just got a, a, a little doll. And um, I, I put the clothes, I got, I got some clothes that matched up the main actor and I just swung it through the trees back and forth and it worked <laughs> fine, you know. So there's there's always tricks you can do like that and camera tricks. And uh, I mean, we've just, I don't want to spoil some of the things we're doing at the moment, but, you know, we've, we've done some, um, I've just done a thing that I thought, I didn't know if it would work. And when it does, you think that's brilliant, you know, we'll get away with that. And it kind of adds to the it, comedy sometimes if it is a bit, right. you know, a bit right. quirky. So. But I think there's things that you've got to think about in terms of how you're going to light a scene. I mean, hmm. a lighting rig is something that we couldn't afford. Um, so we, we've got to think about that. And again, for me, it comes right back hmm. to the script and, and, and kind of thinking, OK, we're not. How, how can we make this um, well lit? So we, we'll set it in, in, in it will make the settings light and airy. Um, and then, you know, there's, there's touches within well, when Chris uses final cut a lot um, and, yeah. and there's some nice touches in there and i think you know certainly with our only defense we took the decision to sh- to uh, to use black and white there and, and, and insert that in post-production because mm. it gave it a, a more hi-fi look really yeah um and and it, it, the, the color stuff that we'd we'd shot we'd use the same camera for tuck bushman and for um for our only defense but but certainly with with the in the black and white uh, finished product for our only defence that looked a lot better than the grainier image that we were getting um, for Tuck Bushman. Mm. Um, so it, it's things like that. It's also, I suppose, for me, w- one of the great joys I get from watching films is, is, is seeing fantastic images with fantastic music. Um, 
and there's a, there's a lot of fantastic royalty free music out there um, if you're prepared to just spend your time trawling trawling the internet. Um, yeah. With, with Tuck Bushman, we were fortunate that we were able to get somebody to to write the mu- write a score for us. Um, but with with the shorter films, um, that's that's not always possible. So um, yeah, we we spend a lot of time looking for the, the right music online and, and getting the royalty free yeah. stuff. I think I mean I think networking comes into play quite a lot as well. You know, if you get out there and meet people who are in the same field as you, you do find, you know, the odd person. A lot of people, you know, are full of hot air talking about this stuff. But, you know, if you get out there and find the right people for you who want to work with you, I think that's that's a key as well to it. You know, you can actually find people who are willing to come and try things out, you know, like, like you, yourself making a film, you know, you're trying things out. So it's, you know... There are people out there who want to be involved, so that's that's a good idea as well to to use people, you know, for well not use them, but you know what I mean. Um, use their utilize skills. Utilize their skills. Utilize. Yeah. <laughs> that's a well, new that's word not, you just used <laughs> over four letters. <laughs> we'll put that one on the paper. Yeah. <laughs> now, now, after you after you finish your film, how did you? Uh, I, you know, after we do a film, how they go to a film festival, blah, blah, blah. Uh, tell me how you learned about film festival, the film festival market and independent distribution and what your process was. Now, I don't know if your film festivals are like ours. So why don't you take us through what a film festival is like where you are? Do you enter them in? I mean, like here we have tons and tons and tons, but do you have the same there or do you enter them in American fe- film festivals? Take us through that. Well, um, yeah, do you want to? Yeah, I mean, um, we Brit- in Britain we don't have the, we, I mean, we're obviously not the, not the size of, uh, of the USA, uh, so we don't have the number of, of film festivals. We, 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 we do have some. Um, and, um, but you, your... can, you can submit them. Are you allowed to submit them if you're from England? I mean, there's no international rules. No, no. I mean, can, right? no, we, 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 we tend to use uh, a website called uh, Without a Box, which I, I, I would, uh, would be surprised yeah. if your listeners yeah, aren't no, familiar with that. Yeah, um, that's, that, that's, that's what we do, too. Um, yeah. and, it, and, it, and that's that's a fantastic f- facility for us. I mean. When we um, when when we made Tuck Bushman, um, that that was our first kind of foray into the the festival market, and um, we we spent a lot of money submitting in, to a lot of festivals, um, and and I don't think that was necessarily the right move. I think it's what's really important is that your your listeners look research the festivals and find out the kind of standard and types of films that the, that these festivals are accepting because there's no point you know if you're spending 40 50 dollars or whatever or more submitting a film somewhere you know after a while it gets quite expensive so you want to be sure of, of where you're submitting it to and i think i think that's that's a mistake we probably made yeah yeah is that yeah. We, you know we were submitting to, to to some of the bigger festivals where Although we might have the, have the story and, and the acting might be fine, we can't compete in terms of the production values that those, that those mm. uh, uh, film the, the films that in those festivals have. So we would never we would never get accepted somewhere right. like that. So yeah, they have. Uh, let's for just for the audience, what he's talking about is they in film festivals they have what's called tiers, T I E R S tiers. There's top tier, there's first tier, second tier, third tier. So with film festivals, unfortunately, the reality is, and these are people who know this here in Hollywood, we know that if you are making a low budget film, now not to say all of them, because the Blair Witch Project is a perfect example of how a low budget just blew up, but this is very rare. So when you're starting out with a low budget film, you want to enter them in the more, the lower tier film festivals, because you have more of a chance of getting accepted. You also have to keep in mind that these film festivals like Sundance, Tribeca, et cetera, et cetera, they usually already have, they only have so many slots and pretty much to be honest with you, they are going to choose the people who have celebrities in them. So don't waste your money going to the the first tier unless you've got celebrities in your movie that they will even consider. Start out with the lower tiers, save your money. 
and that's just the way it works. And most of the time, unfortunately, you should you should enter for your category because if you enter outside your category, they're not even going to watch it. Truth be told, most of the time, sadly, your film isn't even viewed and your money is just gone. And I'm sorry to say that, but that is the reality. Mm. Yeah, so yeah, absolutely. Continue. Right. I mean, we, we, we with Tug Bushman, we didn't get into that many uh, festivals, um, but we, we we did get to go up to the Loch Ness Film Festival, which was a, <laughs> a fantastic experience uh, for us. Um, and we ended up being shown in a, in a small hall up there um, in, in the Highlands. And it was, it, you know, it's not like being shown at Cannes, but it was an amazing experience for mm. us, and, and all these locals turned out to watch it. And mm. <laughs> it was, you know, and it was we had a fantastic time up there, didn't we? Yeah. And absolutely. we got reviewed in the local newspaper, um, and and it and it was a great experience. Um, with with our only defence, we were we've been a lot more canny um, in terms of where where we've submitted to, and we, we've only submitted it to a limited number. Um, now we finished uh, production on our only defence in January. Um, sub- uh, finished and then finished production in February uh, and, sub- and submitted it to the festival. And I was still waiting to hear back because a lot of them don't close till sort of middle of June, um, July, August, and then the Leeds Film Festival, which is our local festival. Uh, you need like a, you festival. need like a whole assistant to keep up with this film festival starts then and then this one starts yeah. then. It's just such a process. Now you <laughs> have I heard of course you were talking about the discount comedy checkout. From here yeah. on till the end of the show, we're going to talk about all of you and your project so let's talk about the discount comedy checkout what the heck is that i love that title (laughs) where did you come up with that and what's it about right okay the discount comedy checkout it's a a comedy improv show um and i i came up with this uh, this concept basically i came to um the lovely new york city for a holiday and um, while I was there, I went on a, um, uh, an improv course, you know, the, the uh, Second City. Second City, uh-huh. Yeah, they did a, uh, like an intensive uh, workshop for a week. Mm-hmm. And I, I went along to that, you know, they were all, um, um, everybody were taking the mickey out of my uh, accent over there. <laughs> Um, so you would never have done that, Priscilla, would you? <laughs> oh my God! Of course I would. No, your guy. Actually, your accent, British actors. I mean, of course you notice that we have like a major influx because no one loves right. the British accent more than Americans. So yeah, they, no, they loved popular. it. They loved it over. Yeah, they were they were loving it. Uh, <laughs> so uh, about that. yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll move on from that one. Um, but yeah, the idea was I went over there and I, I you know, I loved the improv. I just I, I got it straight. And I thought this is great. So I brought it when I came back over. I um I got together with a, a couple of friends and I, I said, look, let's let's try and get an improv group group going here. And um that's what we did. That's what we started. We've we've done that for like five years now. It must be coming up to um just in and out of clubs, you know, um comedy comedy clubs and uh, we run us on night and had stand ups on as well. So um you know we we developed that and as I said earlier we we got a lot of characters in there and we we do like character comedy as well we host the night as a as a character you know um whether it's a game show host or a, you know a terrible club singer or something like that. And then we, the majority of the show then is the uh, improvisation you know and we it's literally raw you know people telling us what to do. So that's that's what the discount comedy checkout is and then from no, the exactly. Is that done monthly and when and where and is there a website for that? There, there is a website, yes. I'll, uh, it's, uh, why, w- why don't you tell the uh, listeners about it, Chris? Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, www.comedycheckout.com. What was that? www.comedycheckout.com. <laughs> so, <laughs> and and want- is it open? Is it open for people, anyone to come and check it out? Is there a fee for that? Sometimes we we charge fees, but it just depends. We, you know, sometimes we're feeling nice and we just let people in. If they if they uh, if they mention your show, we'll let them in for free. Um, <laughs> you can't ask for more than that. My exactly. God, <laughs> we have we have a caller uh, on the line. So let's take that call real quick because we got five minutes to go, and I want to get in all, all of right. the uh, credit. Okay. So, caller, you are on the air. Hi, Priscilla, Leona. I love your show. It's great. And and your guests, Matthew and Chris, what an inspiration they are. I just have a real quick question for them. Um, I have a I'm, I have a low budget movie that I'm trying to get out there, and it involves it's based on a true story. It's a comedy, and it involves a lot of celebrities. 
Do you have any suggestions? In terms of, are you it's, saying you want the celebrities in it? Yes, it's, well, it's based on a true story that involves a handful of major celebrities. And, and I'm trying to get it out there, and I've given it to some of the celebrities, and I'm just I'm calling to see, would you have any suggestions? Uh, but I think basically what he's saying is that, uh, thank you, Gary, and we're going to have them answer that question. Uh, and, and I appreciate you calling. Thank you and calling again. I think basically what he's saying is that he has a bunch of celebrities that he wants to be in his film, and he's been sending out uh, the proper paperwork to their agent saying, hey, will you get your – get your actor to read my script and he may not have gotten the feedback uh that he wanted do you have any tips as far as getting getting them to actually read it or where should he go if they just don't what does he do next that's that's quite a difficult one um i mean from from our point of view we've never really tried to get um any major celebrities in any of any of our work because just because um of the money involved really um i mean some i've, I've heard of people actually approaching um, celebrities and getting them to do like a quick cameo and things like that. And they will do certain celebrities will do that, but nine times out of 10, they want a, a huge fee for doing it. Um, I think, I think the key is to, to persevere. Um, I mean, I, I guess if you're just sending the material in as a, as a, a I don't know. Um, I don't know if he were going to want, if he wanted to actually make it himself or if he were just doing it from a writing point of view, if it's a writing point of view, if his material's fantastic, then I can't see there being a problem. Yeah. You know, if somebody funds it and, and uh, does it that way um, with regards to filming it himself, you know, unless he's got mega, mega money in the bank. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, how that, we, we have yeah. to, if you got, if, if you guys do the answer for that, we'd have uh, Graham Norton in all of your, all of your, <laughs> <laughs> right? I mean, who da- Graham, Graham Norton is like my, I love this man. I am obsessed with Graham Norton. I watch the show every single week. Is he as successful in England as he is over here? I mean, we love him over here. He's fantastic. Oh, he's yeah, yeah. He's, uh, I mean, he's, uh, I think I, I think you were um, he, he's dropped down. I think they were having trouble finding a show for him really over here. Yeah. I mean, he used to be massive over here all the time, and then I think they they went in, they had him on a contract and he had to uh, they tried to fit him in somewhere and it didn't quite work. But I think he's back now doing it doing what he does best. Well, you know? you know, you know, the funny thing is he came here to America and they actually had him doing a talk show here. I right. actually variety show here and the, you know the funny thing is and i swear to god i didn't know who he was this was a long time ago do you know they called me because that was back in my acting days they called me to do a sketch on his show and i turned awesome. it down oh no oh. i turned <laughs> it down well the show never went on the air but because it never you know that never got to that point but i turned it down because i chose another movie i was in uh the ben stiller movie dodgeball so of course you're all right then that's, that's... Oh, there you go that was a reason <laughs> let's let's get in we got two minutes let's talk about uh your latest film our only defense Give us something. Tell us what's going on. <laughs> OK. Um, our only defence is a kind of um, Shane Meadows inspired um, British kitchen sink crime drama. If that's a bit of a long description. Um, it's um, we, we've been in touch with Indie Flicks, which is an independent um, distribution uh, company that, that, that shows independent movies. It's, I think it's uh, based in the US. Um, so you can check that out on, online. You can check it out on our website. So www www.lumfilm.co.uk I didn't understand a word you said. Now, <laughs> let, wait a minute. Hold on. First of all, you never, ever, ever have to say www ever, <laughs> ever. Forget about it, all right? Okay. So just start with the, with the website. Give it to us again. Okay, it's lumfilm.co.uk, L-U-M-B-F-I-L-M.co.uk, and you can check out all our all our things on there. We've also put a couple of links of resources for filmmakers on there right at the bottom. Um, if you scroll down, there's a couple of a couple of sources on there for like uh, royalty-free music and things like that. And we're going to try and build that up. If anybody wants to email us and send some more, you know, websites in, we'll we'll stick all that on there as well. Because uh, it's good it's good to make contact and you know uh, keep in with people and uh, you know we're on Facebook and everything as well. So and Twitter, yeah, yes. Twitter. yeah. They are on lumfilm.co.uk. <laughs> Don't forget the 
It's not dot com. It's L U M B F I L M dot C O. I don't know what the hell that stands for. Dot UK. They're also on imdb.com. They're on facebook.com on uh, under our only defense. And they have all their movies and you have trailers. So you can check out all of their trailers on the website. Isn't that correct? That's, that's correct. That's yeah. Correct. yeah. We're, we're both on, um, we're both on uh, Twitter as well. I'm at, you can get me at, at grubs up 69. And the, uh, I think, I think what, I, what was that? Oh, oh, Twitter at grubs. Go ahead. Grubs up. As if you were serving dinner. Grubs up, grubs up 69. 69. And we don't want to know why you chose 69. That's. Can I just say that's just his. Mine's just, <laughs> <laughs> mine's just I, lump film. Mine's easy. <laughs> I, I don't know if you know what 69 means here in the United States. but It, it means you? the same as over <laughs> here. <yeah. laughs> oh, my God. Okay. All right. So if, you, I, if you're I, sleeping, 1 to 68 were already taken. <laughs> <laughs> So, and I bet you didn't even try 70, did you? Oh, no, no, 70. You can't do that when you're over 40. You can't do that. <laughs> um, okay, so I just want to say I thank you so much. I I, lo- I want so much to talk to you guys about some of the names of your films, and I am so sad we didn't get a chance to. But I, you got to check out Tuck Bushman and the Legend of Piddle Downdale. I saw that trailer, hysterical. Uh, Joe and Matt Save the World. Uh, who the hell is Gordon Gold? I am sick <laughs> over the fact that we can knock over but let me ask you would you two be willing to come back on the show uh the beginning of the year to talk about your films again absolutely, absolutely yes 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 because yes. oh, yeah, you two are so fun it's like <laughs> it's like having whipped cream and a lollipop today so much. all right everybody thank you for listening to matt Hicks and Chris Lum. Please check them out at lumfilm.co.uk. They're really, really funny, and their stuff is hysterical, especially that one where they're sitting on the edge of a of the lake. And oh, just check it out. Just go check it out. I don't know what the heck they were doing, but those those mustaches were hysterical. Oh my God, sit down, don't want to talk, talk. But you guys are really funny, and I hope one day that you're on Gordon Ramsay. No, not Gordon Ramsay. Gordon- <laughs> Graham Norton. On kitchen nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> Graham Norton. Graham Norton. Okay. Graham Norton. Thank you, everybody. Say goodbye to your fans, boys. Yeah. Thank you very Thank much. You very Thank much, you very much, guys. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 <laughs> You're listening to Question Reality. Question Reality. With Priscilla Leona. Priscilla Leona. Only on LA Talk Radio.